Okay, so today we're going to get started right now on the third episode for our Getting Started uh, Learning Lab series. Uh, today we're going to focus on being in the know um, and how to roll out Guru to your team and put knowledge um, in the workflows of your team. Uh, thank you all for being here. This is an interactive learning lab. Um, for our, pro our previous learning labs, we've been using learning objectives and this one is no different. Um, today we are going to focus on uh, three main themes that we'd like for you to be able to accomplish um, in Guru or in your existing knowledge base. So uh, today, um, by the end of the session, you'll be able to add Guru and add knowledge um, to your existing workflows and understand where knowledge would be most helpful for your team. Um, you're going to be able to coach your team with knowledge using some of Guru's features um, and some of Guru's functionality. And you're, you will be able to monitor your team's adoption of Guru and see the importance of knowledge in your team's daily activities. So today's going to be a little bit more Guru-centric. Um, we've talked a lot about knowledge structure and good knowledge uh, in the past, um, but today we're going to talk about how, how to put knowledge in uh, your team's workflows, specifically having to do with um, our product and our knowledge management solution. Um, so as always, some guidelines for these learning labs. Um, they are interactive. We, we want your participation here. This isn't your run-of-the-mill webinar. This is a learning lab. This is an opportunity for you to ask questions. Um, we will also ask questions of you. There will be polls from time to time, um, as well as some real-time demos and, and some time to try things and, and turn things on in Guru. Um, so we want you to be able to accomplish something in Guru today. So please have your instance open. Um, if you don't have a Guru team uh, yet, here's a great chance for you to do so. We have a sign up at bit.ly backslash try dash guru. Um, this is a great chance to create a team right now and, and follow along um, in your instance. Um, and finally, we know that you might wanna take some notes on what's going on today. You're totally welcome to do so. Um, in case we move too quickly and you feel like you missed something, don't worry, we'll send you the recording later, um, we promise. Um, and that way you can, you can send that recording to other members of your team if you feel like you've taken something uh, great from here. So here's how this will work. Um, as uh, per the first two learning labs, uh, this third one will have three sections. Um, I will cover a high level concept about knowledge and knowledge bases first, and then we'll talk about how this concept manifests in Guru and how this helps you use Guru. Again, because this, this episode is more focused on rolling out Guru to your team, it'll be a little more Guru specific, um, but we will also talk about how um, this helped a, a customer of ours accomplish what they were looking to accomplish with their knowledge. Um, and then I'll give you some time to try out what we've talked about in Guru for yourself. So last week we covered good knowledge um, and we ended with downloading the Guru extension. Um, if you weren't able to attend our previous learning lab, um, it was we, were fo we focused on what does good knowledge look like and how to add knowledge into your knowledge base um, in an easy way using the Guru extension. Um, so if you did have a chance to download the Guru extension, uh, we wanna hear from you now. What cards did you create with the extension? Um, if you haven't had a chance to download the extension, don't worry, we'll cover that during this, this session. But um, at this time, I'd love to hear what knowledge um, did you add to your knowledge base um, and what information, and if you haven't had a chance to do so in Guru, what information do you find yourself adding to your knowledge base on a very, you know, quick and, and necessary basis. So the chat is open. Um, feel free to send that to send your uh, responses either to all panelists and attendees or just to panelists only. I will see that, um, see your message if you send it that way. So I uh, would love to hear from you right now. Yep, quick answers to FAQs is a great use case for adding uh, information into Guru um, kind of on a need to know basis. That's awesome. Process information that's helpful in different applications. That's really helpful with Guru and we'll talk about that a little bit more later today. Breaking down longer docs into bite-sized pieces of knowledge. That's 
the perfect use for guru and that's really what we're all about um if you looked at a guru card you you'll recognize that it's great for bite-sized pieces of if, of information and of knowledge and you might be moving your team off of long form google docs or or long pdf documents that that have different processes or different faqs and uh, we definitely definitely believe here that bite-sized knowledge is the most helpful. So that's great to hear. Okay. Um, we mentioned this cheat code uh, last week, but I want to bring it up again now um, because it's a great way to think about adding knowledge in bulk um, from existing sources or just in general into Guru. So this is again a reminder of your cheat code. Um, we have available migration options um, that are really helpful for bringing knowledge in from existing sources. If you're moving off of something like Zendesk or Confluence, um, this is a great way to uh, bring those cards into Guru and bring that knowledge into Guru from an existing location. Um, we also have knowledge syncs. Um, th this is an opportunity for you to unify knowledge from different sources in one location in Guru. So, if you find your team uses Google Drive as well as Box as well as Confluence, and you want to bring all of that information together in one location, you could use this cheat code of a knowledge sync and bring it all together in Guru. So um, these bit.ly links here will take you to our Help Center documentation on how to migrate and sync knowledge into Guru. Um, again, the Help Center will be a great resource for you as you continue your Guru journey. Um, but I wanted to raise this cheat code for you all again. All right, um, as always, a reminder, this is the Guru mission statement. Um, we've worked with, a, with hundreds of customers who have realized the, the pain point of not having knowledge in your workflow and have put knowledge as a center point of their team's success. They believe that the, they believe and we believe um, that the knowledge you need to do your job should find you when and where you need it. So the title of today's learning lab is Being in the Know. Um, so what does it mean to be in the know? Um, over our past, our past two learning labs, we've talked about having your knowledge in one unified source um, and having it uh, be in that good format, those good guideline, guidelines that we talked about last week. Um, all of that is very important, um, but that doesn't matter to your team if they don't use that information. And, and if, if they find that they're spending so much time looking for the knowledge that they, they decide just not to use it and to, you know, to wing it, so to speak. Um, so, what we think about when we think about being in the know, it's it's being able to accomplish the right tasks in the right way, um, to know what to say uh, to customers or to prospects, to educate people correctly on your product, and to send the right knowledge externally with a degree of confidence that makes a, a rep or an agent or a person on your team feel like they're doing their job well. Um, if your team isn't confident in using your knowledge, you're team's task and excuse me your team's tasks and accomplishments uh, could suffer and you could you could see a, a dip in your success there uh, so we we want your team to be in the know we want your team to be using the knowledge they need um, in a way that makes them feel confident about the steps that they're taking and the things that they're accomplishing If you've joined us for uh, either of the past two learning labs, uh, this is a familiar face. Uh, that is Chad. He's one of our guru advocates. Uh, we're going to continue his story today as we'll be focusing on how Chad rolled guru out to his team um, and to the rest of his greater organization. Uh, so as always, Chad is one of our uh, advocates. He's a sales enablement manager. Um, he's responsible for ensuring his team has all the info and training they need to perform. And he found before Guru that he was wrangling information and knowledge from many different teams and different sources. All right, so starting with our first section here of the Learning Lab, uh, we will talk about how to add your team's knowledge to their pre-existing workflows and how that will help them accomplish their daily activities better and save time while, while doing so. So where your team is working can vary on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, your team could be spending time in certain apps or tools that are specific to, to their team uh, that are necessary for them to do their job and be measured on their success. They could be spending a lot of time in email, working internal 
internally with other team members or externally with prospects and customers. Um, they could be working in internal chat uh, applications such as Slack or Microsoft Teams, um, speaking with other team members or looking for knowledge to bring uh, to other workflows such as those apps and those emails that we've talked about. Um, or they could be working live. They could be speaking on the phone with customers or prospects. Um, they could be on site with customers or prospects. They could be at events, uh, talk, telling people about your product, your team, your company, your mission, um, and they need knowledge in that workflow as well. Uh, what you're looking at here, this rotating GIF, is the Guru extension as an overlay to three of those main uh, workflows. Um, well, actually two of those main workflows, three main apps that we've seen teams use uh, Guru with, that's Salesforce, Zendesk, and Gmail. Um, but this is a great way to add knowledge into your team's workflow um, by, by leveraging the Guru extension over any of those four workflows. So the knowledge that your team needs for each of these workflows can be very specific to the place that they're working, their location that, that they're working, or they can be important in more than one of these workflows. So when your team is using a tool, they need information to know how to use that tool or, or process knowledge around what are the next steps that I need to take for a Zendesk ticket, for a Salesforce opportunity, et cetera, et cetera. Um, your team also needs knowledge to quickly access necessary info to respond to emails. Um, I'll give a demonstration of this a little bit later, but when, when there's uh, questions that come up that your team might not know the answer to, they need that knowledge to quickly respond to an email and preserve a customer or prospect experience. Um, your team needs knowledge to answer questions internally for other members of, of your organization so that they don't spend time, uh, they don't take time out of their day answering every shoulder tap um, and going out of their way to find an answer, but instead can quickly um, answer a question and move on to more strategic and more important things. Finally, your team needs knowledge to provide a consistent experience no matter where they are, whether that's on site, on the phone, or at events. Um, they need that knowledge on the go and they need that knowledge um, when, when they need it versus spending that extra time searching for it. So how does Guru work to bring that knowledge into your workflows? Um, we, we provide you with multiple ways to supplement these existing workflows with knowledge that they will need um, in all of these situations. So first and foremost, we've talked about the Guru extension. Um, this is where 80% of our users are, are finding value in their knowledge and, and using knowledge in their workflow. Uh, it serves as an overlay to any web page you're working on. Um, it is a very easy way to access your team's information anywhere that they might be working. Uh, we use those three examples of Gmail, Zendesk, and Salesforce, but you could be on any other web page and click search and find the, the information you need to do your job. Um, we do have a Slack app and we're working on a Microsoft Teams app um, that brings our brings your guru knowledge into the locations that your your team chats internally so uh, as you can see on the bottom of this slide um, the the persona of Steve is posting a new security policy in a slack chat um, so that everyone else can get visibility to that information and to that knowledge Finally, we have an iOS app. So when you're on the go at events or on site, um, the Guru app allows you to get that information and get that knowledge when you're away from your computer. Um, this is a great way for you to not feel the need to lug your laptop everywhere, um, and, but still be able to accomplish your daily tasks when you're out of the office. So, so far we've talked about the many different workflows that are important to your team. So now I'm curious to hear from you. Where is your team spending the majority of their day? I'll launch this poll in a second. Um, per usual, it is a multiple choice poll. I don't want you to feel backed into an answer. Please participate as honest as you can be. Um, and if, there, if there's an option that's missing, please post in the chat. Um, we would love to hear if you know, none of the options we've provided for you aren't relevant. So I, I will launch this poll right now. We'll take about a minute to fill this out.
All right, you all answered rather quickly, so I'm, I'm going to end the poll now. Um, it looks like a pretty even 50-50 split between email and Slack or Teams or an internal chat tool. Um, that's very interesting because as much as you are talking internally with your team, you might be emailing externally with, with prospects or customers. So um, knowledge is important in both of those workflows, and it's what we covered uh, a little bit earlier. Um, but Guru allows you to add that, add the knowledge that your team will need in both of those workflows in a very seamless way. So thank you all for answering this poll. Really appreciate it. There will be another one coming up soon. Um, and we will continue on from here. So if, you're, if you found that your team worked mostly in email or mostly in Slack, um, but also sometimes works in different apps or, or tools or in live situations um, you're a lot like Chad's team I know we talked about email and slack being the the, the 50 50 split here but when Chad was rolling out guru and and just telling you Chad's story here he was focused on knowledge being in a singular location um, but what he learned was that his team needed that information in more than one location maybe it was email and chat maybe it was live and in Salesforce or another app um, they needed that knowledge in more than one workflow. So with the Guru extension and the Guru app for, for Slack, um, Chad's team could get the knowledge they need to do their job in any of their workflows and it saved them time and energy and allowed them to better accomplish the things that they need to do daily versus spending all that extra effort looking for answers and looking for uh, the right subject matter experts. All right, it is go time. And this is the first opportunity for us to uh, be able to accomplish something in Guru for our learning lab. So today we're going to add Guru to some of your workflows. Um, I'm giving you the option to choose here. You can either download the Guru extension or add the Guru app to Slack. Um, I'll walk you through adding the, uh, the Guru app to Slack. If you, were, if you joined us for our last um, learning lab, you, you already have downloaded the Guru extension and we really appreciate that. So I would recommend you add the app to Slack. Um, so right now I'm going to switch over to the Guru web app and go through what it looks like to add the Guru app to uh, Slack. Can someone give me a, a plus one if they can see my screen in the chat, please. Sorry. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so right now we're in the Guru web app. This is your dashboard. Um, I've been using the, the same Guru instance for all three of the learning labs. So this office door code and Wi-Fi password card should look familiar to you. Um, I'm going to go over here to my avatar in the top right hand corner and I'm going to click on users and collections. Um, this, if you've joined us for the, the first um, learning lab when we talked about knowledge structure, this is a familiar page. We're going to go to a different part of this page today. Um, we're going to go into our integrations. Uh, this is also where you would access our knowledge sync options. So Remember that cheat code we talked about? This is where you can set that up as well. Um, but as you can see here, um, Guru can easily be integrated with the following third-party apps. Slack is the, the top of the list here. Um, you'll click connect and you, it'll take you to an authorization screen. Um, so when you click that, you'll be able to set up Guru for your Slack instance. Okay. So now I'm going to give you um, two links that you can follow here. Both are directed to our Help Center documentation. They'll walk you through step-by-step step if you're downloading the Guru extension or downloading the uh, Slack app. Um, we did just walk through the Slack app, so if you, if you feel confident enough to do so right now, go after that. Um, so follow these instructions. We'll give you about four minutes um, and let us know which one you chose to set up. Um, let us know in the chat when you're done. So we will reconvene at 227 Eastern.
as always, if you have any questions or want to let us know about anything that you might be running into, the chat is open, happy to assist you and uh, answer any questions you may have. All right, we have about one minute left. If you were able to set up the extension, um, let me know in the chat. If you were able to set up the Slack app, let me know that in the chat as well. Uh, want to know where you're, where you're leveraging Guru for your team. Okay, it is 2.27 and we're gonna to continue to move forward in our learning lab. Um, if you were able to set up both during that time, that's awesome. Love to hear that uh, the Guru extension and the Slack app will be helpful uh, for you and for your team. Um, you can, excuse me, if, you, if uh, you have more questions around how to use Guru in Slack or how to leverage more out of the Guru extension, um, we do have great help center documentation around our, our integrations um, with Slack and with other apps. Um, so I highly recommend checking out our help center. Okay, so next we'll talk about how you can coach your team with knowledge in their workflows. So we've talked about knowledge as the information your team needs to accomplish their daily tasks. It's everything they need to make sure that they're productive throughout their workday. Now with knowledge in your workflow, you have an exciting opportunity to coach your team with the right information at the right time. Um, this way they won't have to worry about searching for right, the right information based off of the situation that they're in. They can be coached by experts in a passive and effective way. 
So give your team coaching on the, 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 ways, the ways that you can give your team coaching could be on the how to's of an app, um, the next steps in a process. Um, and you can also provide them with new knowledge that they might not have seen before in instances when they can use it the most. Um, what we're looking at here is uh, an image of our knowledge triggers feature, and we'll uh, get to set up a knowledge trigger all together today um, that surfaces information, uh, surfaces knowledge for your team members um, based off of certain situations. And that's something that you can set up for your team to contextually coach them with the right knowledge at the right time. So like, like I said, Guru brings you that ability to coach your team with knowledge when they might need it the most. Um, of course, with the Guru extension, your team can search for information when it comes to mind. But with two other features, you can bring the knowledge your team needs to them without them having to search. Um, we briefly just talked about knowledge triggers. That's, that's surfacing information based off of certain conditions. Um, for, for example, a, a deal stage in Salesforce uh, for, for your sales reps or the ticket priority for a, for a support rep who's working in Zendesk. Um, additionally, we have a feature called AI Suggest um, that, that allows Guru to bring the knowledge you need to you based off of the current chat or ticket or email um, with a customer or prospect. Um, and that, that is Guru suggesting knowledge for you versus you setting up instances to coach your team um, with the right knowledge. So we've talked about how Guru can help coach your team, um, but we haven't gone over how you currently coach your team. Um, so I'm going to launch a poll in a second. How do you currently coach your team? Um, again, another multiple choice poll. Feel free to choose as many options as you'd like. Um, but if we're missing something, let me know in the chat. You can send it to all panelists. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Take about 30 to 40 seconds to fill out this poll. All right, awesome. So it seems, again, another 50-50 split um, between pre-planned training sessions and spontaneous trainings. Um, that's great information to know, and Guru can help you in both of those instances by supplementing your pre-planned trainings with, with the right knowledge or um, being able to train your team spontaneously by using Guru as that training uh, assist. So if you spend a lot of time training and onboarding or you uh, don't currently have the bandwidth to build out, you know, an, a, an even further built out training program for your team, um, you would be in a similar boat to Chad. Uh, he was so focused on getting his team the right resources that he didn't have the time or, or, the, or his own resources uh, to train his team on how to use the knowledge he was providing. Um, so with Guru, Chad had one central location for his entire team to reference for knowledge, but he also had a way to contextually coach his team with the right information to use at the right time. Uh, this saved Chad time and energy and allowed him to focus on more strategic projects for his role while ensuring that his sales team still had the right information and still knew what information to use based off of certain situations. Uh, um, excuse me, it also allowed his sales team to not take time out of their days for trainings that may have been unnecessary um, or spending that time searching for the right information for the right situation um, and it instead empowered them to learn um, and reference the right knowledge for those situations in a very passive way all right another another go time here um, we're going to give you the opportunity to use guru to coach um, by creating a knowledge trigger um, for Gmail. So a great way to think about this is as a tool tip that you can set up for any web page or an app that your team is using. Um, today we're going to do Gmail and we'll use a, a previous example from our prior learning lab um, talking about what is the Wi-Fi password. So I'm going to switch my screen again. 
I'm going to go into an email just to show you all what this would look like. So I've, I've sent myself um, a demo email um, just to, to give you, you know, context. Um, what is the door code to our office? That's another card that we created in our last learning lab. Um, and when I click on the guru icon here, quickly reload the page. I apologize for this. Um, what you'll be looking for is uh, Guru will have a small um, purple corner in the bottom right hand corner that will um, show that there is a suggestion for me to use for this for this information. So um, when I go into the suggestions tab of my Guru extension, um, it's noticed based off of what my team has set up that um, the term of door code exists. And if you click on this card, this is the knowledge that I need to respond to this email and give um, the person that I'm talking to the right information based off of um, what they're asking. So this is a great way for you to coach your team with the right information at the right time. Um, so right now we'll go through uh, what does it look like to create a knowledge trigger. I'm going to do this in the extension because that is the only location that you can create a knowledge trigger. Um, again, going up to my avatar here in the top right hand corner and then clicking on knowledge triggers. Um, I'm going to create a new trigger. Um, we're going to title it the learning lab trigger and it'll pick up the domain of the website that you're on. Uh, the triggers that you're setting up are specific to the website that you want them to surface. So maybe it's salesforce.com, maybe it's mail.google.com, maybe it's zendesk.com, um, but they're specific to the website. So that way you don't get a trigger in the wrong location or in the wrong workflow. Um, I'm going to use the exists um, condition. So if Wi-Fi exists anywhere in, in the email, um, I'm going to set it up so that I will add the card assignment. So if Wi-Fi exists, then I will choose the card. I'll do a quick search for it. What is the Wi-Fi password? So that anytime I get an email around uh, our company Wi-Fi or our Wi-Fi password, um, Guru will surface the Wi-Fi password card for me. So that way I can uh, get that knowledge very quickly, respond to a customer, a prospect, or an internal um, party very quickly, and then move on with my day. So when I click save, that'll set up the trigger and you'll see it right here. Um, I'm not going to do a demonstration of that right now, but Again, what this would look like is um, the card popping up based off of the term door code or Wi-Fi being present in the email. Okay, so here are the steps that you'll follow um, to create a knowledge trigger. I'm going to give you about five minutes to create this trigger. Um, think about what would work best for your team. I use the Wi-Fi example, but if you want to set up a different, um, a different use case, such as a, a competitor or a case study, um, maybe it's a quick response to a, a, you know, an, an outage or a, a product, um, a, a feature request, this is a great way to set up any sort of coaching for your team. So I'll give you until 2.42 Eastern, um, and then we'll reconvene around then.
We have about two more minutes. Uh, can you give me a smiley face in the chat if you've been able to create your trigger? As always, if you have any questions or run into any issues, um, definitely reach out through the chat. Faraz, I, I saw that you were uh, that you reached out through the chat. Um, when clicking on your avatar, knowledge triggers is not listed as one of the drop down options. Um, you need to be an author, an author in Guru, in order to have the permissions to create a knowledge trigger. Um, we talked about structuring your your knowledge for success in the first learning lab. Um, I would highly recommend viewing that uh, learning lab on our, on our YouTube page. Um, that way you'll know how to put yourself into a, an author group. Um, for the meantime, think about what triggers would be most helpful to, uh, for your team and, and make a list of those so that when you have that permission, you know which ones to create. All right, it is 2.42 and we are going to move on from this knowledge triggers exercise. Um, again, if you've, if you've created your trigger and you, you were thinking about creating more, definitely make a list um, and think about which ones would be most helpful for your, for your team going forward. All right, as our final topic, we will talk about how you can monitor your team's adoption of knowledge and see the benefit in a unified, verified, in your workflow knowledge base and how that can uh, provide more for your team. So when we're talking about the benefits of, of knowledge adoption, um, it's important to think about how it benefits, how, how adopting knowledge benefits every type of user in that knowledge base um, and how it helps them do their job better. Um, so for, for subject matter experts, um, they might ask what, what's in it for me. Um, they can focus their time on more strategic projects without losing time in their day to answering shoulder tap type questions. Um, they'll see in, instant value from keeping their knowledge up to date and in one place that the rest of your team can access it. Um, for end users, the more that your reps and agents and the rest of your team adopt knowledge, the more likely it is that they'll increase the speed and efficiency of completing their daily activities. And they'll do so knowing that they can rely on the, the knowledge they just used to be trusted and, and expert verified. So overall, as your team adopts knowledge into their workflows, it'll provide your customers and your prospects with a better seamless external experience, as well as a smoother internal process, as well as a smooth, as smoother internal processes, excuse me, and, and productivity as well. Um, how will this pay off later? So by adopting knowledge as part of your daily workflows, you'll find that the added benefits later on will be that you can attribute knowledge to success. Um, you can understand what information was important for winning certain deals. Um, how did knowledge improve uh, uh, the decrease in your time to response uh, if you're a support agent? How have, have your customers been happier? Are they responding higher on customer satisfaction uh, surveys or NPS surveys? Um, how many projects were you able to tackle because you spent less time worrying about your knowledge and more time being able to accomplish more. That list goes on and on. Um, you'll also be able to see the transparency of knowledge and the importance of knowledge across teams. So as your knowledge base grows, your team will have a better understanding of what information is owned by what experts and departments, um, and there will be better communication and access to that information that is relevant across different teams. 
Finally, you'll be able to fill those gaps. And we talked about that la uh, last week on our learning lab. You can keep, just keep in mind that you don't know what you don't know. And the more that you keep knowledge top of mind in your daily workflows, the more it will be important to fill those knowledge gaps and make sure that everybody knows the right information that they need to know. So we've talked about adopting knowledge and adopting a, a knowledge-based system like Guru. Um, I want to hear from you in, in the chat now. How do you determine if a tool is well adopted by your team? Are there certain metrics or milestones that you're keeping in mind? Are there, are there things that you're looking for that, that would prove to make adoption higher or lower? Um, would love to hear from you in the chat now. We'll take about a minute to do so. Okay, you look at the, the adoption percentage uh, that's usually relayed by the tool. That's great. And that's something that we'll talk about um, in Guru in a second. Yeah, how frequently people are talking about using uh, uh, that system or that tool. Yeah, word of mouth is a very important uh, thing to consider when, when we're talking about adoption. Cool. Tracking frequency of use. Yeah, that's that's uh, something that you can do in Guru as well. But I think that ties nicely to that first response of uh, adoption percentage that's usually relayed by the tool. So if if adoption is important to you for not only for knowledge but for any tool, um, you're a lot like Chad. Surprise. Um, when. When Chad was rolling out Guru, it was important for him to think about what good adoption would look like. Um, so when you think about how relevant and important knowledge is to your everyday workflows, it's important to be able to attribute the use of that information to how your team is performing. Um, so what you're looking at here is a couple screenshots of uh, Guru's analytics. Guru's, excuse me, Guru's analytics. Um, that's a page within your web app, and we'll we'll talk about that in the next slide. Um, so. Using Guru's analytics, Chad was able to easily track adoption of knowledge in his team's workflow, um, as well as how his team was doing in keeping their information verified and up to date, as well, and, and finally, as well as um, what information each member of his team was looking for. And that's that use, usage by user screen in the bottom right hand corner. Um, Chad found Guru, Guru's analytics most helpful for reporting how his team was using knowledge in their day to day and continuing to prove that knowledge was integral to all of their, their daily workflows, not just one, not just two, but everywhere that his team was working, they were, they found the impact and the, the, uh, necessity of using knowledge. So we want to give you a chance to familiarize yourself with our, with our analytics right now. Um, but more so, we want to give you a chance to think about your team goals uh, for adoption. So some questions to keep in mind. Um, is there a certain percent adoption that you want to see by a given week or month or, or quarterly basis um, for your team? And, and, and is, that a, is that something that you want to use as a milestone for your continued adoption? Um, I would love for you to think about who your network of champions is um, so that they can help you with defining your adoption goals. We've talked about a network of champions throughout all three of these um, learning labs, and they will be so important as you're rolling out to, to think about them as a, as a guru committee and as people who can help drive this adoption. Um, finally, are there certain events coming up that you'd like to tie your adoption to? Um, are you launching new products? Are you launching new processes? Are you segmenting your team in any way? Um, how would you like to tie new knowledge um, to those new things or those uh, events that are coming up? So the link at the bottom of the screen, app.getguru.com slash analytics will take you to your in-app analytics that are accessible through the web app only. Um, they might not look like a lot right now, but it's important to know where you can go later on in your guru journey so that you can reference those analytics um, to help you in the future. So I'll give you about uh, two minutes because I want to stay on our timeline uh, to go to our, to our analytics and just familiarize yourself with what you're going to be looking for.
Okay, we're going to move forward now, but I hope you've had a chance to look at um, the analytics page within Guru and also think about um, what are the milestones that you want to uh, base your adoption around. Uh, and then something to keep in mind for the future, make sure to check your team's adoption at those important milestones. Um, it'll help you get a read on how your team is finding knowledge uh, to be important in their, their daily workflows. Um, so definitely leverage the analytics feature as you add more and more people to, to your guru team. Um, it'll also help you in understanding what are those gaps in knowledge and, and what information uh, should, be should be added into guru. Great, so we've, we've gotten to the end of the line here. Um, we're just to quickly review our, our learning objectives. We, we covered how to add Guru and, adding, uh, and how to add knowledge into your existing workflows um, and understanding where knowledge would be most uh, helpful for your team. We talked about the Guru extension, the Slack app, and the iOS app. Um, we talked about coaching your team with knowledge using some of Guru's features, uh, knowledge triggers in particular, but also AI suggest. Um, finally, we talked about monitoring your team's adoption of Guru and of your knowledge and seeing the importance of knowledge in your team's daily activities um, and leveraging our analytics feature so that you get a better view of all of that. Um, as always, here are some resources for you that will help you along your journey. Um, the Guru Help Center, I've mentioned it a couple of times. It is a great, great resource um, for any step-by-step -step documentation that you may need or any uh, features that might feel unclear to you. Um, you do have the opportunity to chat with us. We have um, a support email um, as well as a, a chat button within your Guru web app. Um, feel free to reach out through that. If you would like a more consultative approach, um, we have a scalable CS team that works with um, customers to uh, help them organize their knowledge, roll out Guru to their team, something that's more specific um, for your team in particular. Um, and you can sign up uh, for a call with them through the Calendly link here. Um, finally, we, we wanna make these better for you. So please, please, please give us as much feedback as you uh, feel you know, willing to do. Um, the, the feedback form is at bit.ly backslash get Guru started. Um, and this is my email address so that you can reach out if you have any questions or you want to continue the conversation. Um, I'm happy to help you out as much as I possibly can. So thank you all for coming. This has been an amazing, amazing uh, learning lab series. Um, I'm looking forward to doing it more with, with you in the future. Um, and I would love to hear your thoughts or answer any questions at this time.